When I first learned pointers in C, I thought they were very annoying. I would always run my program and then I would run into a segmentation fault error and then I would have no idea why there was an error going on. And it was just annoying to keep track of all the different pointers, making sure I'm freeing the right memory and making sure I'm not accessing memory that I didn't allocate yet. When I learned later that Java and Python didn't have pointers, I was in complete shock. And I wanted to learn those languages instead, because why would I want to learn a programming language where I have to know pointers when I could do the same thing in another programming language and I don't have to learn, I don't have to worry about pointers in those languages. But when I got into the workforce, I started coding in Java and Python. And what I realized was my background in C and my background with pointers actually gave me a good foundation in software development and helped me understand a lot of things that Java and Python were doing for me under the hood. And so I could appreciate those languages better and I also had better coding practices and coding mentality when I was coding in those languages. So actually learning C first and learning about pointers helped me become a better programmer overall. In this video I'm going to give a simple introduction on what pointers are and then I'm going to go through three examples on how to use pointers in C and hopefully that will showcase why they're useful. And then this is really important because this is one of the main reasons why I recommend beginners to learn C because it would force them to learn about pointers. And I think knowing about pointers is really important if you're going to be a software developer. And this is also why universities still teach their students how to code in C because knowing C gives you that good background information. So even if they're not going to code in C in the future in the workforce, it's still good to learn, learn C and learn about pointers. So my name's Henrik and I'm here to help you learn the foundations of software development. So let's get started. But before we begin, I'd like to mention that I do have a free workshop for you. It's called my Capstone Project Workshop. And in that workshop, I go over three secrets to coding your own Capstone Project in just three months. Now, why did I create this workshop? The most common goal that I get from people who apply to my one-on-one -on -one programming mentorship program is to, quote, be more proficient at creating projects. You and I both know that learning how to code is more than just memorizing code syntax. It's about applying your coding skills to real world projects that make you feel confident and capable. So if this sounds like you, you can download this workshop in the link in the description. And if you download it and watch it and pay attention to what it says, then you'll definitely build a good foundation to your software development journey. All right, so what is a pointer? A pointer is just a variable that stores the memory address of another variable. So I have two variables here. I have int num, this is an integer variable, and it has the value of 42. But in memory, it has an address, and that address is designated, or we can get that address by doing ampersand num, and then we can store that address in this int pointer. And an int pointer, this is an int pointer, and what that just means is, this pointer variable is pointing to the address of an int variable type. So it's pointing to the address of num here. And we have this, I have this example here just to show you basically what a simple case of pointers. So we can get the value of num and then we do percent %d and then we put num here. But if you want to get the address of num, then we have to do percent %p and then we put that ampersand num and then that will show the address of num and then we can get the value of pointer so we said pointer is going to equal the address of num so if i print this one out the value of pointer if i print out the value of the pointer then it's just going to it should print the same address as this one because it's pointing to the address of num and then we can do something called dereference and what dereference mean, means is we get the value that's stored in that address. So if we have this pointer that's, store, that's pointing at the address of num, this num, we can dereference it by doing star pointer. So when you do star pointer, we're dereferencing it. So we're getting the value that's in that address. And then it's going to say value pointed to by pointer. And then this number should equal the same as this number because pointer is pointing to the address of num. So when we dereference it, we're going to get the the same value that's in stored inside num. All right, so let's run this code and see what happens. Okay, so we have value of num is 42. That makes sense. And then we have the address of num. So the address of num is this number. 
and then this is in hexadecimal. So this is the memory address. And then we look at the value of pointer, which is pointing to the address of num. So this you can see that the, ad, the value of pointer and the address of num is actually the same because we're storing the memory address of num inside pointer. And then we want to get the value that's stored in this address. So we just dereference it with the star here, and then we get 42. So that's basically what pointers are, and I'm going to go through another example to help you understand this more. Okay, so we have this swap example, and we have a function here, swap, but let's go to the main function first. So we have x is equal to 37 and y is equal to 82. So before the swap, x is going to equal 37 and y is equal to 82. And then we're going to use this function swap, and basically what we do is we pass the addresses of x and y, and then so swap, what it's going to do is it's going to get the value of a, so a is going to be the address of x here, and then temp is going to equal 37. And then we're going to dereference a because we want to change the value of um, x. So we, we're dereferencing x here with the star a. This is basically, you can think of a as x, so star a is just going to be x. So basically what we're doing here is we're doing x is equal to y. Because if we dereference b, which is the address of y, we're going to get y. So basically what we're doing here is we're storing the value of y into x. And then we're going to dereference b here. Basically what we want to do is we want to change the value that's stored in this address, that's stored inside y. So we want to change the value of y, and we're going to set it equal to temp. And what, we do, what did we say earlier was temp? Temp is just equal to x because we're just dereferencing a, a here is just the address of x. So we store the value of x in temp, and then we do y is equal to temp. So in other words, what this means is that y is going to equal to x. So we're swapping the values of x and y. So you'll see before the swap, x is going to equal 37, y is equal, going to equal 82, and then after the swap, x is going to equal 82, and y is equal to 37. So let's go ahead and do that. And there you go. So x is equal to 37, y is equal to 82 before the swap. Then we do the swap function here, and then we see that the value is now swapped. So 80, x now has 82 and y has 37. Okay, so maybe you're understanding this. Now you're going to be asking, why is this important? And so we're going to start going into the why of why pointers are useful. So first of all, pointers are useful because we can use functions like swap to help sort our arrays or our our data structures. So if you have linked lists or graphs or trees and then you want to do some sorting, maybe you want to sort it in alphabetical order or you want to sort it from least to greatest, then you can use a function like swap to help move your, mem move your memory around. And so pointers make it really easy to do that. The other nice thing about pointers is that it starts getting you to think more critically on your variables and not just think of them as stored in some random places in memory, but you actually know what their addresses are. And so that can lead to more efficient computation and more efficient algorithms and more efficient data processing. All right, now for my last example. And what I'm gonna showcase here is dynamic memory allocation. And what that means is, is we're gonna allocate our memory dynamically during runtime. And so usually in C, we have arrays, but if you declare an array in C, this, the array is fixed and it, it's the size of that array is decided during compile time. So you don't really have much flexibility there. But with pointers, we can actually allocate just the right amount of memory that we need in our programs. So I have this example here and basically what we're going to do is we're going to have a an array and then we're going to calculate the sum of all the elements in that array. But say you don't know what the array size is. And if you have static memory allocation, you'll know what the size is. But say in this program, we don't know what the size is. So what we need to do is we need to ask the user for the size. And then we have a pointer here. And then we use this function called malloc to allocate memory. So we're going to allocate memory of the size that the user gave us. And then we're going to multiply it by the size of int because we're going to have a, we're going to sum an array of ints. So we're going to allocate memory for this pointer. And then we're going to come down here. We're going to get the user input for all the array elements. We're going to scan them in into this array here. So this array here, by, by this point here, you can think of it as, or you can think of this instruction as doing int r size. 
So I can think of it as if we declared this variable here. And then here we use pointer arithmetic to scan on scan in all of those user all the user values into this array of size size. And then here we compute the sum. So we give the array and then we give the size. And then we go to compute sum up here. Basically, it initializes sum to zero. Then we're going to use a for loop to iterate through the size. And then we're going to accumulate the sum here, and then we're going to return the sum. So as the for loop is going, the sum is increasing, going through all of the elements of this array. And this part here is using pointer arithmetic. It's just called, you can think of it as doing something like this. When i is zero, we're accessing the first element of that array. And the reason why we do r plus i is because we're just incrementing the memory address. So we increment the memory address, we want to go to the next memory address. And then we use the star here to dereference that value. And then we get the value and then we store it, we add it to sum. And then we do this over the length of the array and then we return the sum. So we return the sum here and then we display the sum here. And then we have to free that allocated memory. So we do free r. Okay, so let's run this one. Okay, we're gonna do size four. Okay, element one, seven, four, eight, four. This is eight, and then this is 12, that's 16, 16 plus seven is 23. Okay, let's do it again. Let's do six. Okay, that's five, seven, 12, 15, 20. So pointers are really important because you'll have a lot of data structures where you don't know what the size is. And so you need to use, at that point, you need to use these pointers instead. So having pointers gives you a lot of flexibility. Now we can sum an array and we can just input the size of the array in our program as a user. And so the user is not confined to a certain array size. And so likewise, when you develop more complex programs, you're going to want to have data structures in your programs. And then those data structures, you don't know what the size is gonna be for those data structures. So you're gonna use pointers in order to allocate memory for those data structures as you need them in your program. All right, so there's a brief introduction on pointers. Now say you don't use pointers, say you don't, you don't code in C or C++. Say you code in Java, Python, or JavaScript. Now those programming languages, they have runtime environments, and so they have garbage collectors that manage the memory for you. And so your memory allocation is, is handled automatically for those programming languages. But references are still a thing, and memory addresses are still a thing. And so if you don't manage those references properly, the garbage collectors may not be able to reclaim memory effectively. And so it's really still important to have a good background knowledge on C and pointers, even if you're gonna code in those higher level programming languages. Now, like I alluded to in the beginning of the video, this is why you should learn C, because it forces you to learn about pointers, and that gives you a good background in software development. And actually, when I went into the workforce, C was the only programming language that I knew. And so when I went to the workforce, they asked me to code in Java, C++, Python, JavaScript. And I was able to pick up all those programming languages because I had a good foundation in C. And so having this background in pointers in C will be really crucial for your software development journey. Like I mentioned earlier, I have a free workshop for you, my Capstone Project Workshop. And in that workshop, I go over three secrets to coding your own capstone project in just three months. So if you want to become more proficient at creating your own projects, you want to move on from these tutorials and create your own projects, then be sure to check the link in the description and watch my coding workshop today. All right, that's it for this week's video. I hope it gave you a good introduction on pointers in C. And if it did help you out, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any other questions about pointers, feel free to let me know in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer you there. And thank you for sticking to the end. I'm still recovering from my sickness earlier in the week. So thanks for sticking to the end and bearing with my voice. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.